What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and as promised, I got the Pixel 7 Pro versus the iPhone 14 Pro. This is an image comparison video and I'm saying image comparison because there's a lot of processing going on between these two phones and it's not really about the cameras, it kind of comes down to how they process the image. And I was in New York last week and I brought both out and I shot with them. I got tons of images, tons of side-by-side -side JPEGs and RAWs. So let's check them out. So as you can tell, both phones are doing amazing. I was pretty impressed with how each kind of deals with HDR and the dynamic range. I do notice though that the Pixel lays heavily into lifting the shadows where the iPhone lets them kind of sit a little bit more contrasty. And that's more to my taste personally, but it also introduced a bit more noise into the Pixel images. So I tried my best to run through each camera on each phone and they both have similar focal lengths actually, except for the telephoto lens. Uh, the iPhone 14 Pro has a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, a 48 megapixel f1.78 main camera, and a 12 megapixel f2.8 telephoto that's around 77 millimeter. Now the Pixel is similar, it's got a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, a 50 megapixel f1.8 main camera, and then a 48 megapixel f3.5 telephoto that's kind of around 120 millimeters. So they're pretty much the same except for when it comes to the telephoto lens. But on the iPhone you can digitally zoom into that 5x that the Pixel has and I'm going to show that. What's interesting is I forced the iPhone into a digital zoom to 5x to match the Pixel's 5x main camera and a few times I couldn't even really tell much of a difference in detail. The iPhone's doing a really good job at that digital zoom and kind of enhancing the image. What's also interesting is how the iPhone's dealing with the neon sign compared to the Pixel here in this one image I got. The iPhone let the neon sign bloom out more where the Pixel heavily pulled down those highlights and you don't really get that bloom in the neon sign and that's kind of interesting to see but looking overall at the detail they both look really good but you can tell that the pixel has slightly more cleaner image quality all right let's jump on the computer and check out some side by side close-ups so we can look at the detail i've also got some raw images i'll pull up and just kind of show you how well they do with dynamic range okay so i got a couple images loaded up here we're gonna take a look at some jpegs just to kind of look at how the cameras are processing things and then also look at the raw files Got a couple loaded up here. This is the main camera and you can see the settings are slightly different. We've got the Pixel on the right and the iPhone on the left. And this was the main camera. Right out of the gate, looking at both images, I'd say that the iPhone kind of leans a little bit more to the greens, while the Pixel has leaned a little bit more to the magenta. But overall, they look very similar. The HDR is pretty good. The sun was up in the corner here, hitting straight on. And I was kind of in the shade, so it's doing a good job of balancing the overall image here. If we take a look at the far right here, you can see how much crunchier the Pixel is looking and kind of just mushy compared to the iPhone's sharp image here. These are both JPEGs, so the iPhone is going from the 48 megapixels down to a 12 megapixel image, and the Pixel is a 50 megapixel image down to a 12 megapixel image. So. They should theoretically look almost identical, but you can see the iPhone has a lot more detail in here versus the Pixel. It's trying to like over sharpen and add more detail when it's really not adding that much to it at all, to be honest. 
you look up here in the clouds, they're both blown out because that was where the sun was. Um, one interesting thing though I noticed was down here, you can see how the iPhone is doing a really good job at noise reduction. It looks so clean compared to the Pixel. The Pixel's all just kind of mushy and pixelated for whatever reason. And this doesn't happen on every image. It's just something I noticed on this image. So this image right here is pretty interesting. So this is the 5X zoom on the Pixel on the right and we've got the iPhone on the left, but obviously the iPhone can only zoom in to three times. And so I digitally zoomed it into five times to match where the pixel was. And I was pretty impressed with the detail levels here. I think you're gonna see that the pixel looks a little bit sharper. It holds up a little bit better. And that's because it's optically using that five times lens where the iPhone is actually digitally cropping in. But I actually feel like the iPhone's doing a pretty good job here. If you look at the detail on the bridge here, I do think the Pixel, again, has leaned more to the warmth and the iPhone leaned more towards the blues and cooler tones, which is weird because the day was kind of somewhere in between how these both looked. One thing I did notice though, if you go down here where it says NYC and this is just the, the boat tourism thing, um, clearly the iPhone is trying to do some kind of processing to pull that out and it just looks terrible where the Pixel looks pretty natural here. Overall though, I think I still lean towards the pixel image just because of the way the color and warmth looks. And I'm just gonna throw one night mode shot in here. And this was down in Times Square. And I think that they both look really, really good. They did a great job of balancing out the highlights and the shadows. And one thing I did notice though, is that the pixel on the right here did a lot better job at the highlights. If we zoom in on some of these signs here, You can just make out the words better on the pixel because it pulled down those highlights where the iPhone kind of bloomed out or blew out the highlights. And overall, you're gonna see a lot more detail in those signs from the pixel just because of that. The iPhone did a lot better job at processing the noise and you can almost make out what this tower says better than the pixel in the top corner here. And this just looks really bad. And I'm not sure why the pixel is allowing this much noise to come through because this was ISO 59 and the iPhone was ISO 160. So I don't know. Obviously they're both great images if you're not zooming in close on it. And yeah, so let's take a look at some raw files. Okay, so I've loaded in a few raw files. Obviously I showed this as a JPEG. I just kind of want to go through and show you the detail, the dynamic range of each of these cameras in raw. This is the ultra wide lens and this image is really cool. What I'm finding super weird though is how the highlights are completely blown out on the Pixel and they're not on the iPhone. I do like how the copper is coming out of the building in the Pixel so the colors are kind of nice. And the iPhone kind of crushed the shadows. And if we look at the detail levels here, they're pretty similar. But if I pull down the highlights on the Pixel, let's take a look at that real quick because I know it didn't look like this in the JPEG. So I pulled the highlights down there. We can boost the exposure a little bit. That's the cool thing about shooting raw on these phones because you can do this. You could also pull all the shadows out if you wanted to or crush them down a little bit like how the iPhone did it. I'm gonna leave that there and we're gonna compare these two again. And so now you can see how the Pixel actually lowered those highlights quite a bit to match what the iPhone looked like. It's just weird that it didn't import that way, but the JPEG looked that way. Let me go back here. You can see the detail levels and the color. Again, as I said before, Pixel's leaning more towards the magenta, where the iPhone's leaning more towards the green tones. Okay, so this is an image I took down at the World Trade Center Memorial, and this is where you're gonna see a big difference between the Pixel and the iPhone when you're shooting raw, because the Pixel doesn't output its full 50 megapixel image, where the iPhone does output its 48 megapixel image. You're gonna see a lot more detail in the raw files, and I'm also noticing that the raw file also is being imported with overexposed highlights where it didn't look like that in the JPEG. So I wanna fix that real quick. I am seeing that the pixel has a lot more flare up here. I'm shooting in direct sunlight, but I wanna show you the detail levels and why it's awesome to shoot raw on the iPhone. So I'm gonna zoom in here on this flag. And here you can really see the detail levels where the iPhone's shooting 48 megapixels. We're seeing the flag, the building, the trees, the people. They're just so much more detailed on the iPhone. And that's why I always say in my videos, shoot raw because you get way more dynamic range as well as just overall detail. And that's especially apparent if we zoom in on the people here. You can see this guy on his phone here. Just the people walking to you, you can see how much more detail the iPhone has. And I know that if the Pixel was to output a 50 megapixel image, they'd actually look pretty similar. Now, obviously when it comes to value, the Pixel 7 Pro is a much better deal for what you get. 899 US is 
basically the same price as the iPhone 14 Plus, which only has a 60 hertz display and two cameras. It doesn't have the telephoto lens. But that said, I did notice a lot more inconsistency on the images I was taking with the Pixel 7 Pro, especially compared to the iPhone 14 Pro. And if you watched my last video where I shot with this doing a bunch of portraits, it had a bunch of HDR issues going on that kind of would ruin the image. And I know for a fact that the iPhone wouldn't have done that. And I also found that the processing on the portrait mode on the Pixel to be just way overdone, super crunchy, doesn't really look that good. And what some people actually suggested me to do is use the blur effect in a regular image and it'll kind of punch out a portrait mode image that looks closer to what the iPhone's doing because it's not doing any weird processing to the face. And I assume with some tweaks and updates to the camera, I'm assuming they're gonna fix it because I swear portrait mode was the best on the Pixels before the Pixel 6. At the end of the day, either of these phones are amazing and it just kind of comes down to what team you're on. If you're team Android or team Apple and obviously what you wanna pay because this phone costs a little bit more. And I also didn't spend any time on video in this video. So if you wanna watch me make a separate video comparing the video quality between these phones, let me know. But that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.